Showcasing local talent, professionals, and everyday people making Salt Lake City what it is today. It's time for another episode of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. I want to welcome everybody back today to episode 240 of I Am Salt Lake podcast. My name's Chris Hollifield. And I'm Chrissy Shelley. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, coming back week after week as we continue the journey here in Salt Lake City where we uh, chat with locals, professionals, everyday people, find out their stories, find out what they're up to. And this week, we're actually talking to Desi Barr of Walkway Productions and Paris, the main actress in her latest project. Before we get into this episode, though, with uh, Desi Barr and Paris, I want to talk about there's a really cool event happening here in uh, Salt Lake City on September 10th. And we're going to be there. We're going to be there uh, recording your podcast stories. Uh, it's a Get me- Media Ready event. It's going to be happening at the uh, at Club 50 West, mm-hmm. right downtown in Salt Lake City, Saturday, September 10th. They're opening the doors for business professionals, coaches, startups, and entrepreneurs to learn from influential leaders in the media industry. And with the All Access Pass, you can get a full day of speakers and coaching from media insiders and learn what you need to know to take your company to the next level. I'm excited. I'm really excited that they reached out to us here at the podcast and they invited us to go there. We're going to set up a table, do some podcast recordings, talk with people, find out their story, find Mm -hmm. out their business story. I mean, that's really what this is all about. It is. And this will be a great opportunity to really even learn more about the media industry. Absolutely. I'm going to put the link on the website, IamSaltLake.com slash 240 with the show notes for this episode. It's GetMediaReady.co. You're going to go there. You're going to see, I mean, there is an amazing uh, list of speakers that are going to be talking there. They're going to be kind of going over the whole event uh, for the day right there on the website. You can purchase tickets right there on the website. Uh, go check it out. And, it's really uh, something you need to go to if you have a small business that, or a startup or, you know, if anything. If you're even interested. I even mean, if, even yeah, if, if you're you know, interested. There's a, there's a lot of people that don't even know where to start with a lot of this stuff. And, and this I is think, promotion training. Absolutely. You know, it's how to PR in the, in the media world, in the new world. We have a, uh, I want to read this iTunes review. Before we get in, there's a few things, you know, we want to chat about here before we get into this interview. We got a really great iTunes review uh, <laughs> from from friend of the podcast, Shane Smith. He, uh, he, he left an iTunes review, and I just want to read this really quickly. Uh, he, he titles the uh, iTunes review, This Podcast Changed Me Forever. Uh, before I listened to it, I was a 120-pound weenie with no confidence. Now I'm a shredded hulk of a man with confidence to spare. People think I'm the second coming of Harambe, and it's I am Salt Lake's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to read that. I had to. I, 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 I was like, everyone's got to hear that review. That one was great. Thank you so much, Shane Smith. I know Chrissy was uh, hassling him. I was giving uh, him a hard time. You, well, you did open mic. Uh, I last, did. I don't want to get into it right now. We'll I wanna, talk about I'll, it later. I want to chat about it after the interview with uh, Desi and yeah. Paris. But uh, I want to. I want to. Um, get into this interview. But before we do that, let's talk sponsors. Let's talk the sponsors of our podcast. Let's talk Oleo Skin and Beard. Oh my gosh. I love these guys, Chrissy. They're so amazing. They really are. Some of the nicest people that I've ever met. And they actually, they actually follow my daughter on Snapchat and Instagram and she (laughs) posts about them all the time. And she ran out of their All product product and she posted it on snapchat and with a sad face <laughs> and we ran into them and they're like hey we noticed your daughter was out of product yeah like they they really care about everybody they really do it's cool uh their website oleoskin.com go there and check it out See yeah. all their products, see where they're going to be at. I mean, they're doing a lot of the events here in salt Le- or salt lake city uh farmer's market park silly go check them out give them some love uh, I, I'm a big fan of the beard oils, mm-hmm. beard balms, beard washes. I like all the stuff. You know what I really like right now too? I keep jumping. Is their rose water toner? It's just rose water and you spray it on your face. It's a natural toner for your skin. Maybe I should use some of that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, let's give but. you a makeover. Oleoskin.com is their website. Uh, another sponsor of the podcast, Distillery 36. Aw, yeah. I love I love the rum. The Brigham it's Rum. It's so it, good. I, I can't get enough of this. It's a little too good, Yeah, you I just, would say. You want to drink it like all the time? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we actually had an opportunity uh-huh. this past week 
to go visit their distillery right yes. over in West Valley here. Great little setup. It was so cool. Like seeing what they built and how they built it was just amazing. Yeah, they, I they really used loved like, it. you know, like you call it upcycled or something oh, yeah, like, like that. Yeah, like up, upcycled equipment. Yeah, like some old dairy equipment, you know, oh some old gosh. soup stuff. I, it went, was so went, cool. It like went over my head. Big old kitchen kettle and some dairy equipment. They Their um, temperature gauges and stuff are made out of a, an old paper towel dispenser. Uh, and we're going to put These pictures. These guys are brilliant. I'm going to put pictures up yeah. uh, with this episode at imsaltlake.com slash 240. Head on over there. Take a look at the pictures of uh, Distillery 36 and their distillery and check them out. Go to distillery36.com. Uh, and drink their rum. Drink their rum. Bring them rum. Like them on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Tell them that you heard about them from this podcast. Let them know that we're doing our job. Yeah. And spreading the word. Help us out here. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, IamSaltLake.com is the main web. You know, that's the website for the podcast. Head on over there. Find out more about the show. We're going to quit chatting, though, right now. Let's get into the interview with Desi and Paris. But stay tuned for after the interview. There's been a lot that Chrissy and myself have been up to here in Salt Lake City. So uh, without further ado, here's the conversation with uh, Desi and Paris. You know, I like to start finding out with people kind of, you know, where's home, where they grew up a little bit. So I'll let, I, I don't know if Desi or Paris, which one do you want to go first with kind of even, even giving a little bit of like where you grew up or uh, did you grow up here in Utah? Or? Yeah, I, um, I've lived in Salt Lake my entire life. I've lived in the same little condo since I was four years old. Up until then I was taking care of my grandpa or my mom was obviously a four year old probably wouldn't be too good at taking care of an old dying man. But <laughs> yeah, I've lived in Salt Lake my entire life and I love it. Did you ever want to leave or is this kind of where you're, where well, you, where you want to stay? Utah is very, very interesting. It is. It's, I, it's, it is an interesting state. Like I, it's beautiful. I love the nature element of it, but the social, <laughs> I don't do so well with. So I'm, I'm probably going to move out to like Atlanta or LA at some point. And is oh, that, wow. to, is that to nice. pursue your acting career kind of? Yeah. And yeah. I think it'll fit my personality a lot better. And you visit LA quite a bit. I think. Yeah, yeah. So, why why we're talking to you, Paris? I mean, it, it, if we can kind of, I'm kind of curious, uh, and then we'll get over to Desi a little bit. Um, what got you interested in acting? I have just always had a silent pull to acting. None of my family is in the industry. I think the main thing that just was a like a deciding factor for me. Mm-hmm was Death Becomes Her was my favorite movie when I was like eight years old. And I would watch it every single day and I was obsessed. And then one day I just had this realization and I was like, I really like that blonde lady. I want to do what she does. I want to be Meryl Streep. I want to do what Meryl Streep does. And then I just, the obsession went from Death Becomes Her to Meryl Streep and studying her and trying to become the best actress I can be. And, and how, I, old, how old were you at this time? Eight is when it started. Wow. But, wow. yeah. <laughs> a great role model, too. Yeah. We're, we're, I know. You picked a gr- know. like a fantastic <laughs> actress to idolize. <laughs> yeah. That's impressive. And so so she's is she the role in, or what, what part does she play in Sanctus then? That, she that? is the lead. Um, her character isn't completely defined, I guess. And I'm doing the whole movie. Face thing. You oh, you're <laughs> you're fine. Out. You're you're fine. You're fine. Um, I'm pulling you up just fine here. Yeah, I mean, we saw her in Once I Was a Beehive, and Chris didn't audition anybody. He just said, "I want Paris, and I want Jim Stevens for what we call the figure, the dude." <laughs> The, yeah, <laughs> there's no clear definition for like, anybody. The it's characters all, are very vague. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, vague. so there was a clear progression with mm-hmm. it, but um, the whole film was designed, it's a science-based film, so it all has yeah. to do with your head. And We watched the, the trailer, and, yeah. I, and I was really fascinated because it's like, what's the story? And I know it's mm-hmm. not really a, a yeah. story, but it, it, it's more of a yeah. creative um, experiment. So when I was talking to some investors about it, um, 
I just I gave him the script, and when you read the script, you get it. Even though there's no clear storyline for you, it's all about getting out of a rut, if you will, or something that's kind of constrained you, whether it's a relationship or a religion or whatever it is, your mind will fill that in. Huh. Um, and sometimes you find yourself like in the same place all the time and you try different things, but somehow you'd always end up in the same situation or a similar one. And so that's kind of... Interesting. And we might we might bounce around a little bit here, yeah. uh, but back so so Desi, we're yeah. like back to let's back up a little bit with you. Uh, and so you're the producer, right, of the, of the film or in mm-hmm. multiple films, really. Right. Where, where did you grow up? Where, where's home for you? you um, I grew for? up in Missouri. Oh wow! Yeah, I've been here for three and a half years. Um, my brother moved out here and was teasing us with mountains and lots of snow. <laughs> And, um, so what brought, lo- what brought you to Utah? Just him, really. Okay. It was just it like, hey, let's just here than it like is a the lot. Ice storms in Missouri <laughs> <laughs> and humidity, yeah, right, and bugs and bugs, yeah, yeah, and flat, right? Yes, you can't really there. You can't look out of your window and see beautiful mountains, and it's just not that great. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Salt Lake is so much better. I'm like, how do I say this without crapping on my town? I came from misery. No, I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, so I came out here and I thought I had Lyme disease or have Lyme disease. And I researched. And when you move into a higher altitude and lower humidity, it's supposed to improve your health. And so mm-hmm. I thought, if I'm going to go out there, I want to try something different. Um, I used to do some music stuff and um, was helping out producing, um, what do you call that? It was like a late night talk show in Kansas City. So I thought, I'm going to try out film. So I came out here and the first film I did, uh, I came on as a script supervisor. Within two weeks, I was a producer. The day before um, principal of photography, the wardrobe Um, the key wardrobe, she dropped out. Oh, wow. So I did wardrobe. I was the associate producer. I was part-time script supervisor trying to get people to fill in for that. Um, They took the PA and moved him. There was one (laughs) for a feature. Moved him to the electrical department. So I was doing PA work, and I was just like... A little bit overwhelmed? I was not very nice after about two weeks. (laughs) (laughs) But I did it, and... When I came out of it, you know, I realized this is a passion of mine because otherwise I would have just been like, oh, yeah, that's doing what four people's jobs. It was insane, but it was fun. And if you can do that and still enjoy it at the end of the day. Yeah, I was down for a week and then I'm like, give me more. I'm ready to do this. (laughs) So So where did you go from there then? Like you just kind of started. I just networked like crazy and. I do a lot of observing. Uh-huh. So people who responded well to someone, I would talk to them and I'd meet with them and get a feel. And um, just, I started working for C Street a month after the feature. And Cause it seems just like, kind of progressively, just different yeah. different projects. It seems like it's kind of hard to get into the movie. You know, like, like there's a lot of people trying to make movies but to get it out there Mm -hmm. i mean it's like so how do you know where to start and how do you know what to do like i think it's different for every project i haven't found it to be terribly difficult as far as i don't know i guess yes and no because you have to know your audience and you have to know your market and it takes a very long time i mean i did a crowd building for three months for synctus and it still wasn't enough time to build enough people to mm. crowdfund. And it was a very strange thing. Um, and it's how to work the media. And there's rules and regulations and times. And, you know, you have to do everything right. So I think it's just learning. You know, you mentioned crowdfunding. I mean, what would a lot of these independent movie people do without Kickstarter and and those GoFundMes? I mean, they, they, before they came around, I mean... Yeah, it would seem you would a lot just have harder. to do a crappy ten minute YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, mail you us have... a check or something, yeah. you know, in the mail. I mean. Yeah, because I mean, who invests in a short? Yeah. yeah, you know, it's film in itself is essentially 
if you will, a crapshoot. You don't know what's going to happen at the end. You, you it's can all invest in, the air in a concept, but you have no idea how it's going to play out. You have out. no idea how it's yeah. going. Yeah. And you don't know how the audience is really going to take it because that's who mm-hmm. buys it and that's how you get your money. Um, and so it's interesting. And I know I keep going back to saying this. It's just very interesting to me how it all played out because the crowdfunder itself was terrible. We hit every single platform we could, and both of us. Mm-hmm. And I think you reached out to some people. Yeah. Um, we brought on one of the crew members who was like, I need, I want to help with this. We brought him on as an associate producer, and he hit his platforms. And we didn't even hit 50%. But at the same time, we're getting like distributors and investors. And they're like, I love this. This needs to happen. You know, give us the short. And I'm like, we need money to make the short. (laughs) So you 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 found investors to kind of fill the space where the crowdfunding didn't make? Exactly. So I emailed just randomly because that's mm-hmm. what we were doing and to a friend of mine who I hadn't talked to in eight years. And he messaged me back and he was like, this is a brilliant idea, blah, blah, blah. And so toward the last week, I was like, this isn't going to happen. Would you like to be an executive producer on this? Because he had been talking about um, investing in the future. Oh, okay. And I said, if you like the concept, and this is what we have to offer and so essentially creating an um, an investor LLC, and that will be the production along with the other productions on the feature. And so they would get a stake in the oh, profits okay. that way. Profits that way. And so he was just like, yeah, I'll do it. And so That's that should great. be coming through pretty soon. So and you didn't know a, that. I didn't as know that. As a producer, no, no. I mean, what, what is your role from like – the concept to finish are you are you involved in the original concept of of the film or do you find people who have written a film and help them carry it their vision through mm-hmm. for me um and i hear different stories but i've not had to find any story the stories have just kind of been coming to me um and I start just, I don't know, I just whatever sings to my soul, I guess. And as far as, you know, yeah, everything I've been a part of, it's from concept, you know, all the way to, finish. to you know, marketing and, and wow. all of that. Yeah. And I was, I'm working with um, a new producer uh, this week, and she has been an in house producer in LA. And she's just like, being an indie producer is so crazy. Like, I don't even know what to do because as an in-house, in-house producer, you say to this, this uh, department, this is what I need. Mm-hmm. And they do it. And it's like the producer's doing all of that, all that work. And I'm like, yeah, it's fun to me, though. Like, it, it, I It's probably it. helpful for you to be able to get your mind out of one thing and yeah. keep yourself energized. I've yeah, noticed sure. creative people tend to do that. Yeah. So it probably helps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how many how many films have you been part of then, Desi? From start to finish that have actually been completed? Y- yeah, let's say that. Mm. I don't or, really Or know. non-completed. I don't know. <laughs> a what, what, lot what? non-completed. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot where I have had to drop um, for different reasons. I don't re- really know. I don't keep track. I guess like 10 maybe. I mean, okay. there's uh, just a, a lot. Just kind of a curious yeah, of a rough. Something like that. Now, you, now you say dropped a mm-hmm. film. Like what? And it, it's always sad to kind of have to part ways, especially on a project that's beautiful and you know has plenty of potential. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's other reasons why things get dropped. It could just be the money's not there and we need the money or, you know, we really want this type of talent and until we can get that talent, we need to drop Put it, it in the until, back burner mm-hmm. yeah. is there do you have a, a few that you really wish you could revisit or you know i do th- maybe sometimes you think you will revisit i've been talking to the director for three years about one particular short that i did it was the first one after the feature and i always look at it and i think it's a very it's a social topic and people kind of zone in it's about the nsa and how they tap into everything. And I'm just like, people love that. I love that. People would love is it, that. Is it real? Is it not real? Does it really happen? And so I love things that make you think and wonder. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I've been kind of playing tug of war <laughs> a little bit with him. And I'm like, when I get the money, I'm going to 
try like revisit it and redo it i would like he doesn't want to revisit but i do and so i would talk to the writer oh, which yeah. is his brother and to see if i can partner with him to try and make a series or something like that i want to see it if you end up doing it it sounds great. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah These, the films that you that i've seen yeah that you've produced are, are fascinating um I saw, I, well, I haven't seen the actual films, but I watched the trailer for Undertow and yeah. the trailer for Sanctus, and they both look really interesting. Yeah. Undertow was a, yeah. a short film about depression. Yeah. So that was a visual and um, emotional exploration into it. And it was, I love the take because, or the, um, the concept, because when you are depressed, you feel like you're drowning. Mm-hmm. You feel everyone around. We've all around. been there. <laughs> we, we, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It spoke to me. It yeah. probably spoke to you. When we watched it, we yeah. were just kind of entranced. Yeah. It oh, was, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I would say for anyone who has struggled with depression, you should look it up. Yeah. yeah. And no, then, and I, yeah, I, I'm really excited. We're starting to do the festival market and yeah, I'm pretty excited to see kind of how that goes. So, but Sanctus, that that's not finished yet right or no? it is not we only shot one day so yeah. that we would have some footage for the crowdfunding sure sure yeah and and so the crowdfunding is still going on so right we're still taking that, right? contributions through fractured atlas okay and so i posted that link um just so i can even get the link up mm-hmm. for with this podcast right so people can you know, sure. check it out yeah absolutely um and then you know trying to gain the investors and Going for every avenue I can <laughs> to make it happen and get everyone paid. Yeah, I have a question for Paris. Uh, what got or what advice would you give somebody who wanted to get into acting, who wanted to 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 start that line of work? It's definitely. It seems very easy when sure. you first get into it, but the it's all about networking. But network safely. Okay. Because there are some pretty skeezy people in the industry. (laughs) It just, they gravitate toward that. And you have to be careful. Sure. Who who you interact with and who you get involved with and make sure that you're in it for the right reasons and... But was Sanctus was the first film you're working on with Desi, right? Yeah, and I... Would you like to do more? I mean, does, does that kind of stuff usually happen, Desi? Yes. Like if you find somebody that you like, yeah. and you're like, gosh, I want to keep working. Well, with Tim Burton this. really I, yeah. seems to like Johnny Depp. Sure. Yeah, he does. Sure. <laughs> and his wife or ex wife. So, yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, we're doing, Chris is starting to write a short for the boy who played the brother in Abandon. And it's oh, just, you know what I mean? And yeah. so, yeah, stuff like that happens. And Absolutely. when it does, you you go with it, right? Yeah, I've had a director and production company that. I've been on like eight different films with awesome. just because they liked me and I worked well with them. So, well, Adam happens, Sandler definitely. is always his sidekick. Is uh, what's his name? Oh, Adam Sandler's got a lot of he's uh, got, repeats. Yeah, you know yeah I mean? he's yeah. got like his little crew of. And so it's almost something you're excited to see. It's kind of like a like, family oh, you're bringing yeah. back together to create yeah. something new with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, American Horror Story. There you go. <laughs> Perfect example, American yeah. Horror. That, Ooh, I, I haven't seen that. That sounds wait, you, scary. So good. Wait, 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 wait. You've <laughs> never creepy. seen American Horror Story? I'm afraid of scary things. Oh, my God. But it's, it's psychological like, it's scary. It's creepy. Yeah, yeah, it's not like slasher. Gu- okay. Well, well, kind of. Yeah. No murderous <laughs> but, clowns of any sort. Uh, masks. There's, there are. There's you some see? clowns. You are all running clowns. Clowns, No, there's but... different seasons, so you have to watch. <laughs> okay. I, I, I think, you know, I, I'm trying to. It's been a while since I've watched. None of you could say no, though, about murderous clowns. There. There is Maybe one not, season. Is but there a clown in it? Though? There's a clown. Oh, man. There's a clown in the fourth season. Okay, yeah. I yeah, could yeah. have said no, but now I can't because I'm aware. <laughs> Sorry. Because I really like the first season, if I remember it correctly. My, se- my <laughs> favorite's the second. Oh. Nice. Well, I'll have to check them out. Yeah. What, Maybe. With what, the remote. Is, um, <laughs> what is one mistake most filmmakers make regardless of experience, do you think, Desi? I think it is, I would say pride or arrogance maybe i think it's i think it's always keeping a level head and i think it both of those kind of play into growing always being willing to grow and learn and um you know keep perfecting your skill and like not putting your ego in front of the actual work yeah it's just 
being friendly and professional and not saying, you know, I've got this and not really try to keep going or maybe that person has an idea that you wouldn't have thought of. Um, and if it's all about the film, then you should be open to hearing it, even if you don't mm -hmm. use it, because maybe that idea creates something else. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I think that would be, I think, the biggest mistake that some people could make. Do you think that there's that many people out there that that, that are that much, like, I don't are think that so, hard though. to work with, though? I no, mean, I think it's very few that sure. are. And um, and I always, I always kind of shake my head at that. And it's, I hope that you... Uh, that you change and are willing to collaborate, you know, because that's what it's about. It's about art and making something beautiful. And it's more than just a network. Sometimes it's a family. And and you if know. you work well with others, more people will want to hire you. Right. It seems. And, you know, right. further your career. It's always good for you. <laughs> yeah. It's it's never bad to be nice. Yeah. But it's, sometimes it's very easy to find yourself in that position and not mm -hmm. because you think you're better. It's just... You get frustrated with, with the way things have been going and you start to close off and you're just like, I've got this. Or, mm -hmm. you know, you keep getting trampled on. And so you kind of put a wall up and you're like, I like my ideas. These are mine. I want you to sh I want to show them. So you getting pushed around turns into this controlled, you know, project where it's not really a collaboration. So I think it's just being aware of that. Has anybody ever stolen any of your ideas? And you're like, gosh, you stole my idea just because I <laughs> shared this with you. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Man, that, that was probably, uh, you no, know. No, it's that, true. I mean, that, intellectual yeah. property yeah. infringement yeah. is a real thing. Yeah, I mean, that thing. would just be it so tough in, in filmmaking because it's like maybe you had an idea for a film and you mentioned it to somebody and then... A year and later, they, and you see that film out it. there, and you're like, what did you do? You stole my That's idea. That's the scariest thing about yeah. sharing yeah. ideas with other people. I mean, creatives. I guess it could be anybody. Comedians, and then you're trying musicians, not to, yeah. anything, and, and you share something. I'm going to say yes. Okay. But not with film. Okay. It was something that I had created and didn't, um, and it kind of, it really took off. It was, it's pretty, it was pretty popular. Um but I didn't have people who were willing to work and and just do that, sure. right? Stay motivated. And so it was just me doing it. And so literally my phone died. Like I was on the phone all day long and I had to schedule breaks. And women were just like calling me and I had sponsors and it was wonderful. I had people writing columns. Um, but I, I mean, I... I'm just one person, right? And my phone shut off and it wouldn't come back on. I was like in the middle of a call. And I just took a breath and I thought, oh, I'm going to die if I keep doing this. And <laughs> But then a few, well, just last year actually, I walked into a business and I saw something pretty familiar. And I kind of looked at the person and he's like, you know, people can do what they want. And I'm oh, like, wow. And but the thing is though is when that happens people can never really capture the heart and soul of what mm -hmm. your particular project is and so they can take an idea and make it their own but they can't take your idea idea and make it yeah they can't yours, steal your yeah, vision yeah yeah and when everybody's got a different style and the right. inner you know that authenticity right. you know that you have <clears throat> yeah uh, for sure what what motivates you? You were talking about motivation too. I mean, both of you. I mean, were you with acting Paris and and you with producing films? I mean, th there's got to be times when you're not motivated to do what you're doing, right? I mean, what keeps you going? Absolutely. I mean, I've I've had times in my life where I've almost given up on uh -huh. my craft, and people have urged me to give up because it's hard. It's mm -hmm. a really hard industry to succeed in. But I just have to remember why. I am here and why I continue to be here. And it's, um, I mean, it's sharing stories and it's connecting with someone and being vulnerable with someone. But there's also, for me, I want to make a difference by empowering women and survivors of sexual assault in particular, because that happens so much in the industry. There's, there's so many men who are power hungry, who tell young girls that they are going to make them something and that they're going to give them all of this opportunity. 
but then or they boys. take advantage of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, or boys. It happens yeah. all the time in the industry, and mm-hmm. I just and everywhere it happens everywhere with any situation. And I just need if I become the voice who I want to be. Mm-hmm. If I be if I get to the level where I want to be, I want that to drive me. I want to like make an organization and mm. put an end to sure. that. <laughs> That's, nice. that's pretty like that's really amazing motivation usually people who get into acting do it because a lot of people get into it because they want to be famous <laughs> or you know because they want to do those something words a few times right? you know <laughs> you've heard I mean, those words <laughs> yeah i mean it, but it's true though it is and, and and they don't think about the reality of it and it's interesting how in depth you've already looked at it and you're already thinking i want to get to this point as a professional so that i can have a platform to make a social impact. Yeah. I mean, you, that's very rare. And you're young. How old are you? I'm 18. Oh, my gosh. That's just really impressive. <laughs> you definitely have a good head on your shoulders. Oh, you do. Thank I'm you. impressed. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about you, Desi? Motivation. Where do you find motivation? So I actually just recently have been fighting with this. So I was in the middle of the crowdfunder, and I got really sick, ended up in the ER, and and I'm just dealing with multiple directors and um, feeling constrained. And there's a lot of people who seem to try to understand different roles. And anyway, so I was just super frustrated. And I was like dropping projects like one after the other. I'm just like, I'm not going to deal with that. I need to focus on this because that's negative And that's just going to cause me more stress. And I'm going to go over here. And I'm like, I told Chris, I'm just like, I'm just so tired, you know, this is mm-hmm. so frustrating. And then I realized, you know, there's so many people who have a passion and they get tired or they feel discouraged for some reason and they don't follow through. And it's not that they're giving up. They they just maybe feel like it's not worth it anymore and Maybe they want something, want to do something else where they're going to be respected or taken serious or, you know, valued. And I said, you know, I, I'm just going to try and be that beacon for, and especially for women, you know, just do it, you know, stop thinking about it. Just do it. Just try. Mm-hmm. And that's if you a lot fall, harder. That's okay. Yeah. Especially yeah. when it's like a passion. When you're yeah. fo- following a passion, it's for some reason it exhausts you more. Yeah. It makes you, you know, you're because you're so in love with it. Like yeah. you're giving you all put of your energy. everything into yeah. it. So that's yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, you guys like you just got it going on. <laughs> <You're> all inspirational. <laughs> well, and that's you know that's the whole it's point wonderful. of all this because I mean yeah. we all can learn from somebody else. We you know we all right. have passion projects. We all have you know jobs. We all have these things that we do. And there's those moments where you just want to throw the towel mm-hmm. in. And you don't want to mm-hmm. do it anymore. And so you have to find out, well, what, what is it that, that picked me back up yeah. and, and got me going again? And, yeah. and sometimes even people who might be listening, mm-hmm. maybe you guys just reinvigorated them. And that's, that's what I and hope. That's, I mean, that's, sometimes you need to hear that it. other people get exhausted too. Yeah. And that yeah. it's hard. Well, yeah. Is, is that, I know it's frustrating for me when you feel like everybody else out there has it so easy. You're like, gosh, yeah. you have it so easy. And I'm over here struggling. Mm-hmm. And I'm over here, you and know, Facebook I got all And Facebook doesn't help oh. any, right? Because Facebook, your life Facebook, is wonderful. Facebook, you're comparing your insides to other people's outsides. Yep. Like yeah. how you that's feel a, to how you perceive them. That's absolutely what it is. Yeah. And it's, it, that's <laughs> icky. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing and a horrible thing yeah. at the same time, yeah. you know. But, uh, yeah. well, we talked a little, because we talked about Undertow and Sanctus. Was there, I mean, what other films are those kinds? kind of the main basic big ones now i mean what what i mean i have a few so i have um there was a short i did three years ago called shelter and that's still being edited Uh um just someone had a heart attack so we had to put it on hold and then um just all these things were happening and so it's finally getting to the end i'm pretty excited to to show that um and then i just went to hurricane um the beginning of the year and we did, um, oh, damn, I don't even know if I can say it. Oh, well, We did uh, a sci-fi, well, yeah, and the concept is really cool. The way uh, they filmed it, it's innovative, okay. and I thought, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, Chris and I have a couple of features that we're looking at investors for, and they're okay. kind of interested. Um, but, yeah, right now, the main focus is getting abandoned done and 
just kicking ass on, on mm-hmm. Sanctus. Just, yeah. You keep mentioning a Chris. Let's yes. Discuss. Who is, who is Chris? Yeah. Chris Adler is my husband. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's Excellent. Awesome. And he's, 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 well, he's one of the, uh, he's, he's involved with, he's the director of yeah. the films. Yeah. And wrote it. Yep. Well, I mean, some of the films. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's interesting little. So you work with your I work fiance, with my Chris. Yeah. And you work with your Chris. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I work with my Chris. I know when sometimes when I see Chris I'm like, "Chris, oh yeah, the there's more." Well, and, and her name is Chris. Well, yep. Chrissy. Every every like Chrissy. my family calls me Chris. So it gets a little bit confusing. Yeah, a lot of a lot of Chris's. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> a lot of Chris's nice. out there. Um but as far okay, so with Sanctus, especially with Paris here, mm-hmm. I mean, what what more should we share with listeners as far as the the film and 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 uh, hmm. I mean, how can people get involved, or how can people find out more about Sanctus? Um, because that, obviously, that's the that's yeah, the big just, film right now to just push and to... checking out the page and okay. con- contributing. Okay. Um, even if we get the funding through an investor, I mean, those funds can be used for marketing and mm-hmm. seed money, and you know, if we have meetings out in LA, we can get there. Sure. Um, increasing production value, paying people more. I mean, I think that's that's key. People need to be valued, and yeah. um, we're always trying to get by on a short because that's what we have to do. But if we have an opportunity to pay people a decent amount, you know, obviously that's what we want to do. And absolutely, and people can do their job better if if they actually ha- are well, comfortable, they, yeah, in their lives. It raises yeah. the morale. The, yeah. the morale, no. Morale, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. I had that right. Good call. And again, I'll, I'll <laughs> you put should that, edit out my. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that link. I'll make sure to get that okay. link up at iamsalik.com with this uh, yeah. episode's. I would actually uh, like to notes. hear yeah, what. Sure. I know I kind of. You were talking about this on the way here, oh, but. It's all good. I don't know. I I would like for everyone to hear your thoughts or take or. Yeah. On Sanctus and your character. Well, I love the horror genre, like in general a lot and everybody always calls me a freak because of it (laughs) but I've always wanted to be in a horror film especially psychological horror because it's not it's not fake you're scared Mm -hmm. for a real reason um and I don't know it's very abstract the script is very abstract and there is definitely going to be a different interpretation for every single person that watches it but when I was reading through the script and trying to connect as an actor to my character. I saw it, like she said, as someone who just is stuck and who keeps trying to get ahead and trying to move forward with their life, but they're just lost and they're stuck and they're confused. And then they finally meet someone who's just as broken and confused as they are and they're found and they they feel like they have a place. And that's just... I don't know. That's how I interpreted it. Interpreted it. Yeah. Interpreted Inter- it. <laughs> the script. Nice. Um, it sounds a lot yeah. like real life because I think all of us feel that way. Yeah. 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 I definitely all think it will connect to any yeah. any human being that watches it. Yeah. It's interesting the feedback I was getting on it. I had one woman write me and she's like, I can't watch this because I'm not ready to face my childhood Oh, past geez. like I just can't do that right now and I'm like I hope that you get some counseling because I think that's super important <laughs> yeah absolutely. you know yeah. and be able to face that and because you know then your quality of life goes up and I think when you start to allow yourself to feel and be okay with all of the feelings that come with Mm -hmm. that pain and shame and even if you shouldn't feel shame you know anxiety and depression and whatever that is you just have to own it you have to own it you know and a friend of mine another friend of mine he's like wow like i really want to face this it's time for me to face this i'm gonna face it oh man and i'm like okay (laughs) i don't know what that means to you but i love that because every single person's different is that paris is it hard for you to like know that you're portraying that to other people and you're trying to speak to so many different people through your role? I mean, it's definitely hard Mm -hmm. because it's so abstract and there's so many different places I could have gone with it. But I think think that the main thing to focus on when you're acting is just being in the moment and honest and reading the script 
seeing what's happening and reacting mm-hmm. honestly to it and everybody else will will get it yeah they'll feel yeah, it with finding you. who faith is to you yeah will help the audience find who faith is to them yeah, yeah. absolutely I like it. What what uh, I like to find out also a little bit more about uh, people we bring on the show, like other mm-hmm. hobbies and interests. I mean, because so you make <laughs> movies and you you act in movies. What are some other things that you do just to even make you more of a normal person? I guess for, <laughs> I, <laughs> for the rest of us. I guess you'd be a little too deep for us. Let's yeah, bring it down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. always like, or, or is acting. I mean, that's that's what I'm you that not consumes very normal. you. I mean, I do advocacy work. Uh huh. Um, but it's mostly just. Sure. I've been into musical theater my whole life, and oh, really? I just, awesome. I've been with a conservatory for the past four years. It's just a youth theater conservatory, so I had to, I had to end it, because um, I'm 18, and that was, that was a big deal, because it felt like my family, um, but I, I think I'll always continue to do musical theater and straight theater along with film, just every medium is so different, and yet sure. similar, but i I wouldn't be happy doing anything else, so I'm okay spending all my time dedicated to it. Yeah. And she loves babysitting her nieces oh, and nephews. I, there you I go. love my yeah. nephews. And swimming at the beach in California. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And she loves Meryl Streep. I love yeah. Meryl Streep. <laughs> I just saw Florence Foster Jenkins today. And that was a good movie, huh? Oh, it's definitely see that movie. a film that makes you think. Yeah. yeah. I went to, we saw it through GoFobo, Chris and I did. Yeah. And I'm like... At first, you're you're just you're just laughing hysterically, oh and then at the God, end, you're so like, it's it's a really good really thing. Yeah. yeah, wow, yeah, and you're kind of confused, and you're like, how does this work? And then at the end, What's you're happening? like, it worked, and yeah. that's that. Yeah, that's yeah. how you know it's a good movie. It made you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah and absolutely. feel. Yeah. <laughs> how about you, Desi? Um, Pillow Talk is obviously probably film. <laughs> so <laughs> it's always film. As a matter of fact, trying to find time. For either of us to not talk about film, Mm -hmm. it's pretty much non-existent. Yeah. And that's okay with us. Um, We like hiking, uh, biking. I love working out. Love my kids. So anytime I get to spend with them and kind of disconnect from film and Mm -hmm. bring me back down to reality and, you know, I'm a mom and I can just be that and not anything else is nice. Um, Chris and I like... Netflixing and chilling. <laughs> Sometimes really just chilling. So, you know. <laughs> those were air quotes for anyone not visually here. Yeah, those were <laughs> quote unquote. Lock the uh, doors so the kids yeah. don't get in and then you Netflix and chill. Speaking of Netflix, yeah. what's the most random thing that you've watched all the way through? All the way through? Yeah, Netflix um, is full of random <laughs> yeah. stuff. It's a gold mine. Yeah. My favorite was The Killing. I have not seen that because it sounds horrible. No, it's not. It's <laughs> there's no murderous clowns. You will love it. Um, there's Wait, murder there's, in it. There's no clowns. In no clowns. It? No clowns. Oh, Chris no. is out. Uh, I love. I love clowns. You will love she it. She hates clowns. It's amazing. It's I amazing. Like happy clowns though. I'm indifferent. Okay, well, that's okay. probably good. Okay. Yeah, All I'm clowns. becoming indifferent. Yeah, <laughs> you love clowns. Yeah. Well. Love Not is a strong word. Clowns, right? <laughs> I'm okay with clowns. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's healthy. Yeah. Anyway, a healthy relationship with clowns. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say uh, somebody was visiting Salt Lake City mm-hmm. for just one day. I ask this of every person that okay. comes on the show here. What would you tell Are them you if, if, they, if they were coming for a day? What What is it like one or two things? You, hey, go check this out while you while you're in town. Is there anything, here anything than that me. comes to mind? Hiking okay. is definitely yeah. something. Absolutely. The Capitol's beautiful. Uh, City Creek? <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, whatever comes to your mind. I've just know. lived here my whole life, so nothing's sure. really interesting anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's kidding. <laughs> Come to Salt Lake. No, no. no that's, I want honesty. Not I want honesty. Tourism money, please. Yeah. Tourism yeah. money, please. Yeah, yeah. I would so say. so downtown, yeah. go downtown, check out go Capitol downtown. and City Creek and, and nature maybe. hikes. Sure. Yeah. What about you, Desi? I would say try to find as many old town main streets as you possibly can. Grab a drink and just stroll. There you go. Yeah, that's I my like favorite that thing. Idea. I love, I love it. it. 
Yeah. What about uh, any favorite local eating spots, places that you know, and I don't know that you that you enjoy? Anything comes to mind or no? I like Blue Plate Diner. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. They they got oh man they're they got a cakes. good brunch. Yeah, yeah. good brunch. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna chop it. I think, but is it Bambara? Mm. Bambara? Oh, uh, it's downtown. It's in a hotel. It's right off of Second oh, and Main. I think. I think. Talking about. Or Second and Third. I think I know what you're talking about. But it's beautiful. And we actually listening. went there last yeah. night and just. It's expensive, but it's wonderful food. Yeah, I would say check that out. So save up and go there. Save, save up night. if you don't have the money. I would probably say go to B A Barbecue, which we like to kindly call badass <laughs> yeah but yeah anything else uh before we wrap this up here i mean we'll run down any like ways to contact okay. uh, but again i'll put those links i mean anything that we didn't talk about that maybe you'd like to talk about i don't know before? paris do you have any projects besides sinctus yeah. that you're doing that you um talk i about or plug or i just wrapped a film that's still in post-production called sacred vow it's a really heartfelt story about falling in and out of love and marriage and stuff it's i liked being a part of that and um i start filming a movie called the kennedy project which is a true story about a girl here that died of batten disease Hmm. um and then i'm also in a film starting next week called um i wish wish you were dead just wish you were dead but yeah those three are my most recent what was the one where you're smoking Oh, um, because that looked beautiful. I'm like, <laughs> I just want to stare at that because that's so not where people have put you. Absolutely. And I love that. I love playing those roles. Yeah. It's called The Next Door, which okay. is like an, a take on bad guy missionaries, mm. which is no one's ever done that before. <laughs> that's actually nice. really interesting. Yeah, it's super cool. Who but was the director on that? Barrett Bergen. Nice. Yeah. And I also, my movie, Once I Was a Beehive, is still mm-hmm. on Netflix. So go oh, okay. give so that check some love. That out. Check yeah. that out. <laughs> Wait, that was the most random thing I've ever watched. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I've seen that one. That makes you look familiar. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Anything else? I mean, I, you know, I, I, you know, I bring people on sometimes. We don't always know everything, you know, yeah. that they have or anything that you want to mention or plug or or uh, mm-hmm. what, what links, I guess. Is there any links that you yeah. know off the top of your head? That- so just facebook.com backslash Sanctus the Movie. Okay. Um, and then I can give you the link to Please, yeah, Alice. Yeah, yeah, make sure to, to message that to me and um, I'll get that on the website. And I would just, I know it's deep and I know sometimes people get sick of it, but I do encourage that if you have an idea or that you've thought about trying something, just go for it. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. And don't, I guess, protect your contacts so much and be willing to provide information to those who are trying. Sure. Just keep helping yeah. people. Yeah. That's it. That's really good advice. What about you, Chris? Anything more you want to ask them before we let them go enjoy their evening? <laughs> no, I'm just going to go cyber stalk them for a little bit now. <laughs> no, absolutely. Speaking She's of gonna, cyber yeah. stalking. Follow me on Instagram. There, well, there you go. I thought you were going to tell us a good story. Well, I know. Yeah. What, you is got, your, what is your What is your Instagram, Paris? Um, it's a weird. Okay, it's at Paris Ivana, which is Y V A N N A. Okay. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> nice. Got any other like myself. Twitter? Do you, do you guys do Twitter at all? I try Twitter. Well, I can't we call it Twitter. Twitter. Uh huh. Yeah, I, but... it's too unorganized for me. I don't sure. know. Sure. Maybe yeah. Just Fair haven't gotten into it's it. interesting with Twitter, though, as we were going through the crowdfunding phase, mm-hmm. with Twitter, you have to post every two hours because you have mm-hmm. a different mm-hmm. crowd every two hours. Yeah. It's very fast paced. Can I say something else? Sure. If anybody out there knows how to effectively market within Snapchat, <laughs> call me. I actually found. Um, I could talk to you a little bit about you that. You know how to work amazing at that. And, yeah. and I did find a. A thing specifically for like business marketing on Snapchat today. Yeah. Oh wow! On a blog. Cool. Snapchat is so it would be great for what you're doing with, it with is. films. Oh, and also I don't know. 
if you know anything about Patreon. So I know a lot of musicians use it, uh-huh. YouTubers, but someone brought it to my attention to try and use it for the projects that Chris and I do because uh-huh. we've always got something going on. Sure, sure. And we, we, uh, well, I've heard of Patreon and we actually want to get one set up for, That's a good idea. for, the, for podcast. the podcast. Uh, it's a great, it's a great yeah. um, way for... Uh, artistic projects to mm-hmm. continuously be funded. Yeah. Cause yeah. I mean, people, especially fans, you know, they want to be part of it. So you're giving something back, yeah. you know, they have rewards, stuff like that, it, nice. but it's a continual yeah. thing. I'm actually, uh, there, there's a few podcasts that I'm a Patreon supporter of. Nice. So a little familiar with Patreon, but yeah, yeah no, I'd love to ch- chat, Snapchat. We're, oh we're man. Chalk off, <laughs> off I literally here. felt like I was 60 when I looked yeah. at that oh my gosh, and I thought me too. Oh my God. I have no idea what to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, I was like, how do I, what do I do? And I'm like, and Chris was like, delete. it's so simple. It's yeah. so simple. Why can't it. you figure it out? And yeah. I make apps yeah. for a living and I'm like, this is not okay. <laughs> well, they make no it, they make it that this. way. So us old people can't figure it out it's and they just, give up. That's true. And the young people have You don't realize something. how simple That's, it is. Yeah. It's like so, you understand oh, it's so, it's so, so, it's so ridiculously. It's just goofy. <laughs> we'll we'll talk more about it. I'm going to let people go. Thank you so much, Desi. Thank you so much, Paris. Thank you. And we'll end it there. All right. Many thanks to Desi and Paris for coming on this episode of the podcast. Again, go to IamSaltLake.com slash 240 for all the links to get in touch and check out their uh, projects, their films, everything that they have going on. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, I had a, I had a really good time ladies. chatting with them. They, yeah, we actually talked a little too long probably because uh, it was fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> it's always fun to find out about new things mm-hmm. and uh, bring interesting people on the podcast. I'd love to know your thoughts, though, on that episode as well. Feel free to reach out to Chrissy or myself. Yeah. I want to talk about, though, okay, Chrissy, here yes. we go. Let's so last talk. Sunday, mm-hmm. I woke up from a text message from, a, from a, a guy we met out in Chicago at the podcast conference. Yes. He works for Podomatic. I woke up f- with a text message. He says, hey... This is Sloan from we, we I met you from Potomatic. We met in Chicago. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you like music or not, but are you interested in going to the uh, Journey Doobie Brothers show this evening at USANA? Yeah. Okay. Well, this was at like maybe ten a.m. or so that I got the text message, and so I was well, yeah. And so I asked you. I said, Chrissy, are you interested in going to this? I mm-hmm. wasn't sure. I knew Sundays we have a lot going on. Yeah, you know, I didn't it's know. Usually, we, pretty busy. Can we sneak away and do this? Uh, but I, I responded. I said, "Sure, why not? Let's." You know, that'd be great to get some tickets. And I'm thinking, it's a date. It's it's a date. You we know, you and I get to get out, go yeah. check out some music. We haven't been to a lot of outdoor uh, summer music this this year. I think this is the only one we've been to. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to admit that on the <laughs> air. Uh, so I responded. And he said, "Sure, you know, hang tight. Uh, I have to find out." You know, it's kind of like uh, one of those last minute things that might be pretty close to the last minute before we find out if we got tickets. Mm-hmm. And of course, I don't know, six hours later, it's like four in the afternoon or so. And yeah. he, he responds and he said, sure, I got tickets. There'll be, a, you know, you plus one at will call. And so, how, how did he get, like, explain how he got the tickets for us. Oh, did I not mention his uh-uh. brother right. was opening up for Journey and Doobie Brothers? Yeah. So that's how he, he you know. He, so talented family much? Yeah, exactly. And, and it, well, it's funny, too, when he asked if I like music, like... A, who doesn't like music? Are you <laughs> no, a, hate it. It's are, the worst. Are you a, a caveman or something? I mean, <laughs> seriously. Oh, no. So no, that's cool. <laughs> I was under the impression, oh, we're just going to have general lawn tickets. Mm-hmm. So we brought a blanket. We brought a blanket. In preparation. A, in preparation. And I'm just like, okay, no big deal. We Wait, go- can I talk about the lady in front of us in line? Oh, sure. There's intense security. They're making us pull everything out of our bags, shake our blankets. Lady in front of us empties her bag, and it has nothing but like four belly dancer outfits in it. <laughs> 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 like, they were all going to dress up as belly dancers once they got inside and just dance. Did you feel a little out of place? Like, <sighs> well, maybe I should have brought my belly dance equipment. I was jealous, man. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we I noticed on the tickets, when we got the tickets at Will Call, mm-hmm. that they were seating. Yeah. I was like, oh, we got seats, you know. Should we sit at them? I didn't know. I'm like, or would you rather prefer or, lounging out on the lawn? Right. If you're going to be that back that far anyway. Exactly. Out. So we get up there. Mm-hmm. And we start figuring out, okay, where are our tickets? Where are, where, where are our seats? Yeah. Okay, we were 10 rows back from the stage. 
some of the most incredible seats mm-hmm. that I have ever had. Yeah. I mean, it, it and we were on the aisle end. We were nice, basically soft, in the middle, padded seats. Yeah, it was it was really cool. So, you know, I doubt Sloan is listening right now, but mad props to him. Yeah, thanks, for, man, for hooking us up uh, with those tickets. It was really fun. It was a fun night. Yeah, I mean, all the bands were amazing. Put on a great show. It was a perfect night for a show. Oh, it was the weather I mean, was great. The weather was great. He, you got to get out to some Utah music shows, especially right now. Absolutely, I mean outdoor <sighs> shows. It's perfect. I just wish I could afford them all. Uh, really, yeah. I guess that's that's I guess my, that's a thing. Money. That's really uh, where I get hung up at. Yeah, me too. But it was a good show, and uh, I know I posted a few on Facebook. I know you did as well. So if you followed us on Facebook, you probably already saw them. Mm-hmm. But uh, I want to talk about okay, Chrissy. Yes, you did open mic. On Wednesday, this past Wednesday. I'm getting back on the horse. At Wise Guys. Mm-hmm. You, like you said, you're getting back on the horse. I, you know, I'm not going to lie. I didn't think you would. I didn't think you were going to follow through. Because <laughs> I talk about it so much. You, well, you've been talking about it. Yeah. You've been saying, Chris, I, I need to get up and do open mic and, and whatnot. And you were taking this break from mm-hmm. comedy. I thought I was going to reinvent myself. And then I realized that's a lot of work. What, re- <laughs> okay, just talk about that for a minute. Reinvent yourself. What, what do you well, mean? So, I mean... When when I was doing comedy, I was going probably through the darkest part of my life. Which some of the best comedy Which, can be created at that moment, and right? And I think it's a coping mechanism. I think that's how most people get into it, is to bring humor to situations so that they don't want to kill themselves. I mean, you want to anyway, but it, it was... Um, it is helpful to laugh. It is helpful to laugh. And and so, but the problem is, they're, they're towards the end of when I, before I took a break, I got a little bit too dark and was very suicide jokey, you know, and, and it, it kind of just made people uncomfortable. more uncomfortable sure. than funny. Like guys thought it was funny. Girls just felt bad for me. So guys felt like they couldn't laugh because then they would piss off the girls. And, you know, and then once I realized that was happening, I'm like, I just got to take a break and reassess things for a while. Yeah. And, and then I and met you. And you took a break. You met me. I kind of re-inspired you. I, 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 I ignited that flame. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't, okay, so you went there Wednesday and I wasn't quite sure if I was going to be able to make it or not. Because, mm-hmm. you know, Wednesday I like to do my laundry. It's laundry day. It's laundry day. <laughs> I know that sounds so pathetic. Like, it's Chris, actually you genius. You can't do it any other day? Well, no. I mean, that's that's in my cycle. You're so a busy guy. I'm a busy guy. And so that's, you know. Anyway, I made it there, though, just in time. I uh, I think you went up. Like, literally, you were the next person. You showed up while I was on deck. Yeah. yeah. And so you went up there. I thought you did a great job. Thanks. I was, well, I was so nervous coming back. I forgot the setup to my finale, like my final joke. Yeah. But you did <laughs> Whatever. It. Are you going to keep trying to get up there and do, yeah, do it? I'm going to try to do it every Wednesday. Oh, my god. So if you guys are really bored on Wednesday nights, hop over to Wise Guys. Yeah, check it. Was it like five bucks to get in? Five bucks to get in, yep. Yeah, I mean, so it's it's really, it's a low key, a couple hours. You get to see some stand-up comics, of course, local. There's some Laugh at people. There's some people there that aren't funny. There's like sometimes homeless guys wander in and try to do it. It's It's <laughs> really interesting. <laughs> anyway, that, I just wanted to bring that up really quickly. I do want to talk about this, though. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited for this. Comic-Con mm, is this too. week. I'm so excited. And w- you and I weren't sure if we were going to get press passes. Yeah. Well, it, w- it was very vague. It was very vague. Yeah, like, oh, do, do, are we going to get it? Are mm-hmm. we not going to get it? I wasn't sure. Should I request the days off from work? Yep. yep. I, I didn't know. And then and I even emailed them, and I'm like, hey... You know, I, I explained, re-explained who we were. I said, if you have any questions, let me know. Got an email back saying, you'll find out on the 26th. We so, heard nothing. 26th came and went, and we're like, oh, man. And so we got kind of panicky. We did. Because we're like, well, we want to go. And mm-hmm. so I posted on Facebook, hey, does anybody have any Comic-Con tickets? Mm-hmm. Or anybody have the hookup? Friend of the podcast, Jessica, she's actually part of another uh, cool Utah podcast. The new Utah podcast. So check them out. Uh, but but props to her. She she came through. She uh, wanted to hook us up with wristbands for Thursday. Which is when Mark Hamill's here. So. Yeah, very grateful for that. Um, we've had a lot of chances to talk with Jessica at local events, and we found out uh, that she actually collects and resells rare whiskey. So make sure to check out uh, all of her adventures. In confessions of a uh, social 
What did, what did you Con- write? Confessions of a social spectator. Oh, that that's her that's her website. I broke it up in our notes because oh. it's a really long word to try to read. Okay, okay. Well, I just <laughs> wanted to give a shout out to her because I thought that I was so awesome of her yeah. to go above and beyond and try to hook us up with wristbands. She's really one of the neatest people I've ever met. And uh, so go go support her. I mean, she she tried to pull through for us, and then we got yeah. media passes. Anyways. And then we, the next day we got media passes. <laughs> so I'm excited for Comic Con. Make sure you're following us. I'm hoping to do some podcast recording, some Facebook mm-hmm. Live yes. stuff like that. We'll of course be getting some pictures, and make sure you're connected on uh, social media. And if you have any requests for us to dress up, I know Chris, you're you're not into uh, well, cosplay. No, 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 no. It's not that I wouldn't <laughs> do it though. No, no, I, I would dress yeah. up as something but i just totally. don't want to go out and spend a ton of money doing that's it. that's always the problem yeah i mean yeah. i just i just i i don't know i just can't do it chrissy that's cool but it'll be fun though so if you see us out at comic-con make sure to come and say hello yeah we'd love to meet you we'd love Maybe. to meet the listeners exactly love to hear your your take on things um i wanted to just give a shout out to the the fifth annual slc slut walk it's happening on September 24th at 12 p.m. They're meeting at the city building to the Capitol. The Slut Walk challenges assumptions about sexual assault, and it brings lights to the victim blaming that happens in those situations. And with all the things in the media, you know, it's kind of, you've seen it, you've seen the, so go go support them. Absolutely. Well, I'll try to get the event uh, link, yeah, the, Facebook, the event Facebook event, on this uh, episode show notes as well. So make sure to uh, check that out as well. Really quickly, I do want to mention the event happening September 10th at uh, Club 50 West, the Get Media Ready event. Go to uh, getmediaready.co, mm-hmm. see the complete lineup. You can buy your tickets. We're going to be there recording your podcast stories. Come hang out with us. Come hang out. Really cool event that they're putting on and, and really excited that they invited uh, Chrissy and myself to, to, to go on over there and, uh, and do this. It's an all-day event, a lot of fun. Uh, before we do leave this episode, we want to tell you about another awesome local podcast. There is a ton of them here in Salt Lake City. This is one of my favorites, though, the Utah Foodie. Mm-hmm. If you love podcasts, you'll definitely want to check this show out. They've been talking to some amazing people involved with the restaurant and food establishments here in Utah. They make me hungry. Again, that's the Utah Foodie Podcast. Find them in iTunes or Stitcher Radio or however you listen to podcasts. So uh, go give them some love as well. Utah Foodie Podcast. Chrissy, I want you to run down the contact information. How can the five listeners of this podcast find us? Well, there's always the classic online stalking. You can find us at Facebook. Both we have personal accounts, Chris Hallfield and Chrissy Shelley, or the I Am Salt Lake page or group. We have new have now have a new group on Facebook. Twitter, you're I at I Am Salt Lake. Mm -hmm. I am at Chrissy Tweets. Um, and also you could just good old fashioned email. Absolutely. I'm Chris at I am salt com, And I'm Chrissy at I am salt com. And people like to spell your name. I don't think anyone's ever spelled my name right. So what's the correct way? <laughs> just K- in case. K-R-I-S-S-I-E. That's it. That's it. Chrissy at I am salt com. Voicemail or text 385-202-5926. Anything more you want to add, Chrissy, before we let the uh, fine folks of uh, the <laughs> podcast world uh, let them leave for let the day? Let them go away? Uh, no, I'm just, hopefully we see some of you guys at these events coming up. Comic-Con, Club 50 West on the 10th. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know there was some other stuff we, we got. We got we got stuff up our We, we kind of have too much stuff to even talk about. Oh, my gosh. But uh, you all have a great week. Get out and uh, support local. Love the city you live in. Buy local. By local, like Chrissy says. You guys have a great week now.